So you've been diagnosed with hip impingement or femoral acetabular impingement, and you're probably feeling frustrated, scared, and a little confused and uncertain because you face a few decisions on how to take care of this and get out of pain. Ultimately, you're going to have to decide between getting a surgery to quote unquote fix the hip impingement or going the physical therapy conservative treatment route and trying to avoid surgery and the complications that can arise from an arthroscopic operation in the hip. In this video, I am going to hopefully clear up some of this confusion and uncertainty and provide the pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages to both surgery and physical therapy for elimination of hip impingement symptoms. What I will not be telling you is whether or not you should have surgery. That is a decision that you are going to have to make, but I am going to do my best to give you as much factual information and advice as I can from my expertise as a doctor of physical therapy. And my goal for you at the end of this video is at least to be a little more confident in what you eventually decide. So let's just start with what hip impingement is, especially femoral acetabular impingement. That's the type of impingement that they will typically want to do surgery on. You've most likely had x-rays and maybe some follow-up MRIs. And what your surgeon or orthopedic specialist found was some abnormal shape of either the femoral head or the acetabulum, which is part of the pelvis that makes the socket of the hip joint. And sometimes you have both. The idea is the so-called extra bone is causing the hip impingement and irritating the soft tissues and the bone in the front of the hip or in the groin area. Now on the surface, this seems like a structural problem, right? You got x-rays and MRIs and your specialist told you that you have this extra thing, right? These um, extra bony prominences on this part of your hip. So if we take away that part, it should stop impinging. However, this doesn't take into account the uh, complexity of human movement, especially in the hip. It doesn't take into account the strength, mobility, flexibility, uh, stability, and overall just motor control and connection to movement of the hip. And we're gonna get into all of that later, but the main idea here, surgery is trying to fix the structural issues and maybe have an effect on all of the other factors that go into human movement. Whereas going the physical therapy conservative route doesn't ignore the structure, but works around the structure and optimizes all of the other factors so that the structure of the hip becomes irrelevant. But let's look a little more in depth into surgery. So the typical operation for FAI, hip impingement, is called a hip arthroscopy. What basically happens is your surgeon will take a few different tools in order to both see inside the hip joint and do what they need to do, shave down the bone, whatever they're going to do. And sometimes that changes from surgeon to surgeon, but typically just a few small incisions to shave down the bone, take out those bone shavings, visualize the joint, and then get out of there, seal it up. And sometimes they do other things depending on what they find in the hip joint. So the advantages of surgery, uh, an arthroscopic surgery for FAI, is that the research does show that there's a pretty high percentage of satisfaction with this surgery for FAI and hip impingement uh, about 10 years down the road. There are several disadvantages you also wanna consider with this surgery though, one of which is the long recovery time. It's typically anywhere from three to five months, and that's to get back to where you were, to the level you were before surgery. You also have to remember that whenever a tissue is cut through or damaged, there will be some development of scar tissue. And you can do the best treatments to decrease scar tissue and make it align properly, but there will be some scar tissue. And that scar tissue will permeate every single soft tissue that the surgeon had to go through. And while a lot of people are satisfied with this operation 10 years down the road, there is a significant percentage of people who experience a reoccurrence of the bony masses, myself included. I had a hip resurfacing arthroscopic uh, operation just like this, 
and after my recovery of four to five months, I was still having issues. I went back in and they said I still had hip impingement and they had to do the same thing. So obviously I'm a little biased, but that is kind of the more factual information that I'm going to provide to you. And just a quick note, if the surgeon really cares about your hip getting better, they will prescribe physical therapy both before and after the operation. The reason for this is they want to optimize the strength of your hip before surgery so that after surgery, when you start doing PT again, you get stronger more quickly. And ultimately that means you're going to become more functional more quickly. But that's not the kind of PT we are going to compare to surgery. We are more going to be looking at physical therapy that's aimed at managing, alleviating, and ultimately eliminating the symptoms that are a result of hip impingement and femoral acetabular impingement. Now, again, as a doctor of physical therapy, I obviously have a lot to say about this and a lot of opinions on the current state of physical therapy when it comes to hip impingement. So, you know, grain of salt and all that, but let's start with the more factual information. The advantage is nothing is being put into or taken out of your body, which means there's minimal, if any, scar tissue development. Physical therapy is typically aimed at improving all of the other factors I mentioned, strength, mobility, flexibility, stability, motor control, basically how the hip moves. There's no recovery time from physical therapy because the physical therapy is the recovery. And as a bonus, you just generally will become healthier and more functional as a result. And finally, you have the potential to avoid surgeries for a long time or even forever. Now, there of course are disadvantages to just going the PT route, one of which is it's not really doing anything to change the structure of the hip joint. And there is a risk of slightly irritating the hip joint temporarily and increasing the inflammation as you learn what techniques and therapeutic exercises work for you and your hips and what is more painful and you should avoid. Now, all of those advantages and disadvantages are great and in a perfect world, uh, surgeons and physical therapists would be experts on every condition in the world. But that's not how life is. We don't live in a perfect world. For example, surgeons may have slightly different approaches to the hip arthroscopy, especially if there are labral or chondral defects. Again, anecdotally, in my case, I had labral tears associated with my FAI. And so when my surgeon went in to shave down the bone, as it were, they also clipped off the part of the labrum that was poking into the joint and uh, ostensibly causing a lot of my symptoms. Now, after the surgery, went back in, got MRIs, there was still a labral tear. So um, he said it had retorn, but you know, I don't know enough about the surgery to know what exactly he did. I can just tell you what he told me. I'm not a surgeon, I'm a PT. And I did talk to another surgeon who would have repaired the labrum and I wish I had known that was an option before going into this surgery, but can't change the past, right? But I do know a little bit more about the PT world. And what I typically recommend for pretty much all of my FAI and hip impingement sufferers is to do physical therapy first, specifically with the goal of managing and alleviating the hip impingement symptoms, the pain and the pinching. Because if PT fails, the worst that can happen is your hips might hurt a little more if the PT irritated it, or you got stronger and more flexible and are now able to control your hips a little better, but you're still having pain. And that's what we consider a um, failure of physical therapy is it didn't help your symptoms at all. In this case, surgery can be a very effective and reasonable option. And again, a lot of PTs will just say, don't do surgery ever, it's the worst thing in the world. I'm a little more practical. I think that conservative measures should be done first and if those fail, then we can move on to the thing that you can't take back. Now, I'm about to go on a kind of rant uh, and unfortunately, not all PTs are the same. And there are a multitude of reasons why most PT clinics are not able to effectively help people avoid surgeries 
especially those who are experiencing hip impingement symptoms. First of all, most PT clinics and most people who go to PT are expecting insurance to pay for it. Unfortunately, uh, insurance companies now kind of dictate what you should be doing with a patient, even though the PTs are the ones who went to school for it. This is because insurance will compensate for some treatments more than others, regardless of the effectiveness or the associated pathology. Most clinics, PTs have to see three or four patients at a time, and insurance companies place a lot of value in a lot of documentation for often things that really don't matter as much, especially they don't matter to the patient, but insurance needs in order to compensate the clinic. And of course, if the clinic wants to make more money, they will make sure that they have the patient come in more often than not. And that develops an over-reliance on physical therapists and not on taking ownership and control of your hips. And I've heard this story before. I've heard it multiple times. I'll have a patient, I'll treat them for hip impingement, and we'll start walking out of the office and they'll say, I think something's wrong because my hips feel, like they feel better after the treatment. And I'm so used to leaving PT with them feeling worse. And that's very frustrating because after PT, you shouldn't feel worse. But a lot of people leave PT thinking, oh, my hips hurt a little more. I worked really hard. This is going to get me better. And that's not the case. What really happened is your PT probably couldn't pay a lot of attention to how and what you were doing. And so they kind of brushed it off to the side. Again, this is not on those PTs. It is a failure of the PT clinic and ultimately the situation of American Health Insurance in whole. What does differ between PT specifically is their knowledge on certain pathologies. Me, for instance, I have personally experienced hip impingement, FAI, and labral tears and personally know a lot about how to treat these conditions. But there are a lot of conditions I don't know a lot about how to treat them. So if a patient comes to me for hip impingement, I'm going to be able to treat them more effectively than a PT who has not seen a lot of hip impingement patients or doesn't know as much about treating hip impingement. I am um, obviously a doctor of physical therapy, uh, but I refuse to submit to all of these reasons why PT doesn't help people with hip impingement. And it really explains why a lot of people who start physical therapy to alleviate and eliminate these hip impingement symptoms don't get better and aren't able to avoid surgery because they think they failed PT, but in reality, the PT failed them. And here's the thing, I am not smarter or more skilled than an average PT, but I've had hip impingement, I know the consequences of surgery, and I know how to make this condition significantly better and ultimately eliminate the symptoms associated it without needing surgery. And I know this based on my own experience, my experience treating patients, and the literature that I've investigated. And here's what I found does work when it comes to treating hip impingement with the goal of eliminating and managing the symptoms so that you can avoid surgery. You have to start with pain management, avoiding activities and anything that increases your symptoms and utilizing soft tissue mobilization to continue to help decrease the pain symptoms of the hips. The next thing that works better than what PT clinics do is very frequent therapeutic exercise sessions throughout the day, not two or three sessions throughout the week. And these sessions that you do several times a day should focus on improving lumbopelvic stability, improving hip mobility, improving hip strength, improving motor control, and ultimately changing the any lifestyle factors involved in the aggravation and altered movement of the hips. After all of that, we can start to just move in general more, live an active, healthy life, and prevent these symptoms from coming back without needing to do specific exercises several times throughout the day. And I will admit, this is a very difficult thing for me to do one-on-one -on -one with patients. It's very time consuming. I don't have a lot of energy to uh, talk directly to people a lot. And um, in some cases, the financial burden of going through this treatment in person 
can prevent people from getting the best physical therapy treatment for hip impingement. Recognizing this, I developed pain to perform FAI and labral tears. And if you want the best chance of avoiding surgery for hip impingement, this is it. Affordable, efficient, and effective, I created pain to perform FAI and labral tears so more people could feel better without the uncertainty of is surgery or PT actually going to help. In conclusion, ultimately, the decision to do physical therapy or surgery or neither um, is yours and no one, myself included, will judge you for whatever decision you make. Take all of this information into account and do what you think is best for you. Now, if you want to do something like now, today, to help decrease some of the symptoms of FAI and labral tears in your hips, check out my free course, Soft Tissue Release for FAI and Labral Tears. This is five videos that I have made to show people suffering from hip infringement symptoms, how they can get some pretty quick relief by doing these techniques on the five most commonly restricted muscles in hip impingement. In this course, you will learn and start to implement those five techniques and start to feel some relief. And it's my free gift to you because I actually want you to feel better. So enroll in the free course, check out Pain to Perform, FAI and Labral Tears. Links to all that will be in the description below. And thanks for watching.